Hey everyone, welcome back to Harry Potter Folklore. So you will have already correctly guessed by the title of today's video that we are going to look at the possible scenario of what would have happened if the Death Eaters refused to rejoin Voldemort following the Dark Lord's return in the Goblet of Fire. Now as many of you know, Voldemort isn't exactly the nicest or kindest or decent wizard around. He actually took a lot of pleasure in inflicting pain and misery upon people but what if the Death Eaters just outright refused to re-enter his service? What if some of them wanted to and some of them didn't? What if the current climate of the Wizarding World was a lot more bearable than a world under the Dark Lord's control? Let's jump straight in and find out in today's video. So Voldemort returns to power, he's reborn and all that, he summons his Death Eaters to the graveyard as he did but he senses an unease, a rather tense atmosphere, a sense of uncertainty amongst them all. After all, he's been gone for 13 years, people have moved on, the world has moved on, the Death Eaters have moved on. They're in their 30s now, they have families and most of them are settled. They don't really have the energy to throw themselves into another war, especially after the ramifications of their defeat in the last Wizarding War. So they refuse to rejoin him. What happens then? Well, for starters, the situation could have had several potential outcomes. Firstly, Voldemort would have most likely been enraged and possibly resorted to immediate violence to punish his disloyal followers. Don't forget what he said would happen to those who didn't answer his call to the graveyard. Maybe he would have made an example of Crabbe or McNair. Anyway, I think this could have created a power vacuum within the ranks of the Death Eaters leading to infighting and divisions within the organization. Additionally, the refusal of the Death Eaters to rejoin Voldemort could have weakened the power and influence of the Dark Lord. Without his loyal followers, Voldemort would have found it harder to carry out his plans and maintain control over the Wizarding World. He hadn't even regained full power at this point, we have to remember that. It could have provided an opportunity for the opposition such as the Order of the Phoenix to challenge and defeat the Dark Lord once and for all. However, it is also possible that the Death Eaters could have regrouped and formed their own organization separate from Voldemort which could have led to a splintering of the Dark Lord's forces and potentially even to rival factions vying for power and control. The Death Eaters refusal would have cast doubt over Voldemort's commanding authority and have people begin to question if he was as truly dangerous as it was once led to believe. It is likely that the Dark Lord would have been forced to reassess his strategy and tactics. He may have had to recruit new followers or find new ways to exert his power and control. This could have led to increased violence and unrest in the Wizarding World as Voldemort sought to assert his dominance and stamp out any opposition. The refusal of the Death Eaters to rejoin Voldemort could have also had far-reaching implications for the larger wizarding community. With the Dark Lord weakened and a current split in his forces, who would start their own dark organizations as I mentioned? On the other hand, this was the perfect opportunity for the Order of the Phoenix for example to step in and fill the void left by the Death Eaters, strengthening their position and increasing their influence just as they did at the end of the last war. This could have led to a more peaceful and stable wizarding world with the forces of good finally prevailing over Voldemort. The outcome would have depended on the actions of the various players involved and the choices they made in the aftermath of the Death Eaters refusal. Furthermore, it would have also led to increased scrutiny of the wizarding world by the Muggle community. The Muggles who were already aware of the existence of magic and the wizarding world well, you know, the higher up muggles anyway, it would have been shocked and frightened by the appearance of dark wizards and an outbreak of violence that would eventually spill over into their world. This could have led to increased efforts by muggle authorities to now monitor and control the wizarding world and potentially even to attempt to eradicate magic altogether, which they had the technology to do, don't forget. The muggles could wipe out wizard kind with a single act. Gellert Grindelwald showed those who attended his gathering in Paris just how powerful the Muggle world was by showing the atrocities of war. In addition, I'd go even further and say it could also have a profound impact on the relationships between the different wizarding communities, especially if these split dark organizations 
wanted to make their own challenge on all of Britain as a whole. Not just the magical sector, the Muggle community already wary of the Wizarding World would now have been even more suspicious and fearful of the magic users, leading to continued tension and conflict. So yeah, the strained relationship between the two communities could lead to an all-out war, and that's without Britain looking for additional assistance from its allies. Then we have the international wizarding community, which was already aware of the Dark Lord's return. International communities would have been shocked by the appearance of dark wizards and the outbreak of violence. It seems to be all these different communities are shocked that these new dark organizations are just appearing everywhere. This could have led to more increased efforts by the international wizarding community to monitor and control the wizarding world of Britain. So now we have the muggles trying to monitor the wizarding world and now we have international wizarding communities trying to monitor Britain's wizarding world. So they would want to create a failsafe plan if the order could not be restored. So then we have the impact on the political and social structure of the magical world. The Ministry of Magic which was responsible for regulating and governing the wizarding community would have been forced to reassess its role and responsibilities in light of the changing circumstances. The Ministry may have had to increase its efforts and potentially even resorting to oppressive measures to stamp out dissent. The Aurors would have had all limits upon dark magic lifted, meaning the unforgivable courses would now be legal once again for the second time. What I'm sure is of the fact that the former Death Eaters or members of their own smaller dark organizations would have been stamped out as they didn't have the strength in numbers and Voldemort would have sunk back into the shadows to bide his time for several years before mounting another attack. After their victory, the Ministry of Magic itself would have been forced to examine its own values and beliefs. With the Dark Lord and his followers no longer a threat, for now, the wizarding community would have been forced to confront the reality of their actions and the harm they may have caused. This could have led to more efforts to promote peace, tolerance and understanding, or it could have led to additional separation of the community along ideological lines. The Ministry in an effort to better prepare its future graduates of Hogwarts for the world they may face one day, will take a new stance on the education and training of young witches and wizards. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, among others, could have reassessed their curriculums and teaching methods, potentially even incorporating lessons on the dangers of dark arts and the importance of peace and understanding, while emphasizing the importance to learn these dark spells in order to have a better knowledge to defend against them. However, pure blood ideology would still have remained a controversial issue, potentially even leading to the formation of new alliances and the fragmentation of old ones. The economy would have also flourished now that the Death Eaters were vanquished. Many wizarding businesses and industries, such as the wizarding shops and the production of magical artifacts, would have had the opportunity to thrive. This would have led to more increased prosperity and growth in the wizarding economy and it could have led to increased competition and even price manipulation. Maybe a bit of both. As I said, with every good, there seems to be a counteract. So in conclusion, the refusal of the Death Eaters to rejoin Voldemort would have had a profound impact on the Wizarding world, potentially leading to a shift in the balance of power among the Wizarding families and factions, a change in the Wizarding economy, and a confrontation of prejudice and discrimination. The outcome would have depended on the actions of the various players involved, as I mentioned at the start of this video, and the choices they made in the aftermath of the Death Eaters refusal. There you have it everyone, that is my take on what would happen if the Death Eaters refused to rejoin Voldemort on his return to power. Let me know your own take down below. Thanks again and make sure to look out for the very next video.